हेलो डॉक्टर्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल अगेन सो एस आई एम कंटिन्यूइंग द मेडिसिन सो दिस आर माय क्यूआर कोड्स यू कैन स्कैन हियर एंड जॉइन माय टेलीग्राम चैनल आई एम जस्ट पोस्टिंग द वीडियोस व्हाट एवर आई एम जस्ट डिस्कसिंग इन द यूट्यूब एंड यू कैन इवन एक्सेस द पी डी एफ सैसवेल दिस इज माई इंस्टाग्राम क्यू आर कोड यू कैन स्कैन इट एंड एस यू नो आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू द कनेक्टिव टिश्यू डिसऑर्डर्स वॉट आई हैव स्टार्टेड and previously in two videos which i have put in the medicine playlist i completed first topic is sle and second topic is rheumatoid arthritis these two are under the connective tissue disorders and third connective tissue disorder today we are going to discuss is scleroderma and one more we reminds that was gout so in the next video i am going to discuss about the gout but today we will complete the scleroderma this is a small topic so let's do it as soon so i am going to write whatever i completed in the same side heading that was connective tissue disorder let me write it these are the topics i covered already connective tissue disorders under the connective tissue disorders first i completed sle and second i completed rheumatoid arthritis and today we are going to discuss a very interesting scleroderma and the fourth one in the next video i'm going to discuss that was gout so let's start our topic today is a scleroderma so let me use the other color so you can identify it easily today is sclero derma so by this name you need to crack this name you need to break this name and you need to understand what does this scleroderma mean let's try to break this word this is sclero and this is derma all of us know the derma is a skin and sclero sclero means something hard something hard as we have studied about the medical terminology in our college itself so we know it this is very easy one this is hard or you could say it can be thick as well so as overall there was something related to skin the skin looks or skin feels if it touch the skin it feels like hard or thick skin okay so when comes to the topic so what is this scleroderma how it is affecting our body so that's how we need to know about it okay first of all this comes under the connective tissue disorder and as we are discussing all the disorders what we are discussed up to now these all are autoimmune problems so scleroderma is itself a autoimmune problem so i already told you autoimmune means our own body system our own immune system is attacking our own body so that's what the autoimmune disease mean so let me write it ai means autoimmune and this is ds means disease so i already told you autoimmune means it affects more males or females as in previous videos itself i have told you autoimmune problems always mostly affects females when compared to males let's say females are more affected than the males so so how this how this disease is affecting our body let's say in our blood vessels it causes fibrosis in our blood vessels it causes fibrosis and there was lots of lots of collagen formed inside our blood vessels and that leads to the space inside the blood vessel will be decrease so that's how 
if space is decreased the blood flowing to the end of the fingers suppose we say if we consider the fingers the blood flowing to the fingers will be decreased because there was a collagen formed inside the blood vessels that leads to the thickening or hardening of the blood vessel that decreases the flow of blood to our fingers end of the fingers that's why if we touch the fingers of any scleroderma patient we feel like the skin is very thick okay this is the reason i'm i'm explaining you and and if they put their hands in the cold water there will be a change in the color first they changes to white color and next they changes to blue color and finally they changes to red color this is known as reynolds phenomenon so this is how it happens so let us write what i have told you just now okay this fibrosis causes increase in collagen inside our blood vessels so whatever i am explaining now this is the pathophysiology like how it will affect our own body this is how it affects okay the collagen increase in our own own blood vessels that leads to vaso constriction that finally causes decrease blood flow to n organs okay this is how we need to remember the pathophysiology how it is affecting our own body okay so after this pathophysiology scleroderma let's let me write it scleroderma sclero derma further classified into three types okay let me just uh, make a table for you so you can uh, understand very easily and when you start reading itself you can feel it very easy okay scleroderma first it affects like local local regions okay localized under localized we call the lesion as morphia scleroderma under localized means it is affecting only one particular area that was called as morphia morphia is a lesion let me say uh, if uh, some area of our skin like i will just show you the image uh, so you can understand it very uh, well so hmm, let me see, let me show it so this is how the morphia looks like see see this area is normal and this area is normal but this particular area looks like if you touch that area it feels like hard and uh, like it feels like a tough area on the skin it is only localized to particular area it doesn't uh, doesn't spread over this areas so you can appreciate only localized lesion at only this particular area that's why this is localized lesion the localized lesion is known as morphia this is morphia so next what we are going to discuss is limited the next type of lesion is limited okay now scleroderma is limited to particular areas we remember this by a famous mnemonic i hope everyone in medical school whoever went to medical school i hope everyone knows this this mnemonic known as crust c r e s t this is the famous mnemonic crust crust is the mnemonic okay in this one we need to remember the most and most important antibody you know anti centromere antibody this is most important question for the exam in c itself c for c we need to remember anti centromere antibody only for limited scleroderma okay you need to remember 
एंटी सेंट्रोमेर एंटीबॉडी इज ओनली फॉर लिमिटेड स्क्लीरोडामा ओके एंड वी वी ऑलरेडी हैव सी इज फॉर कैल्सिनोसिस वॉट डज दिस कैल्सिनोसिस मीन्स सम हाउ द कैल्शियम डिपॉजिट्स uh deposited in the particular area of the skin that makes our skin very hard and very tough this is known as calcinosis and when comes to r r is for i already told you r is for reynolds phenomena what does the reynolds phenomena mean you think about it uh, when i was writing you need to think what does the reynolds phenomena mean Reynolds phenomenon is so as i said you the blood supply to the end of our fingers decreases because there was an collagen and there was a fibrosis that's why when you put our hand in a cold water there was a color change so we need to remember what are the colors it was changing first it appears as white color and next it changes to blue color and finally it changes to red color this is the sequence of color change in the reynolds phenomena in the sclerodama you need to remember this sequence if they ask in the exam you need to answer that okay so after this one there was e so e stands for esophageal dysmotility so there was something like if uh, if we eat any food there was an esophageal dysmotility there was an uh, no proper food going into our stomach so there was problem somewhere in the esophagus this is known as esophageal dis motility so in this whole crest points what you need to remember is examiner knows everyone knows the crest mnemonic so he don't ask anything from the crest mnemonic whatever he ask is what is the antibody responsible for the limited sclerodama you need to remember it as anti centromere antibody this is most important i'm just marking it with a star mark so you can remember it when you are reading okay so what does the s stands for s stands for sclerodactility sclerodactyly what does the sclerodactyly means sclerodactyly means i already said you this one as well there was a thickening there was a thickening when you touch the fingers of the sclerodoma patient there was thick thick and uh, you feel like leathery fingers somehow if you touch the leather there was a roughness right so that's how you will feel if you touch the fingers of sclerodoma patient this is the sclerodactyly sclero means hard or thicken okay sclerodactyly means i am going to write here itself thick fingers this is sclerodactyly and t stands for telangiectasia i hope everyone know this telangiectasia this is like somehow if you see the a uh, skin of the patient there was an some spider web like vessels have you seen i hope have you have seen the spider web right this is how the vessels the red color web like pattern we can see in the skin this is spider web vessels okay i'm just writing everything because when you study back after my video you start studying you don't feel any confusion while studying okay so i completed the localized morphia lesion and next i completed limited like this scleroderma is limited to that particular extent okay it it is only affecting calcinosis and it causing renal's phenomena and it is also causing esophageal dysmotility and sclerodactyly and telangiectasia this is under limited now we discuss how it is affecting our own body systems this is known as systemic in the name itself you will get to know the systemic means it is affecting our own body systems okay in this systemic the most important we need to remember is our antibody
here the different antibody is responsible when compared to the limited in limited anti centromere antibody but in systemic there was a different antibody that was anti topo isomerase antibody this is very 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 important because this this came in exams like uh, for two sessions it came so this is our pyq you need to remember any time they will ask as a question so this is most important you need to remember this for sure okay anti topo isomerase antibody is for systemic anti topo isomerase antibody is for systemic i am just going to give you another clue as well anti topo isomerase yes is there so this is systemic yes for s so systemic is topo isomerase iso systemic iso systemic this is for systemic okay you need to remember like this you don't forget when the question comes in the exam you need to answer this you don't miss the question okay and uh, one more uh, like it can be also known as anti scl 70 antibody as well okay or anti scl 70 antibody this can cause or anti scl antibody 70 antibody both of them can cause systemic symptoms in our body okay and you need to remember these two for sure and after that it will also cause let me use another color it will also cause renal's phenomena here also in renal's phenomena i already told you what was the color color sequence first white color next is blue color next is red color this is the color sequence you need to remember and next was sclerodactyly this is all revision for us because i already told you what is the sclerodactyly means sclerodactyly means thick fingers if you touch the skin of the scler scleroderma patient you feel like it was a leathery skin this is scleroderma this is sclerodactyly in the scleroderma patient okay and next is microstomia microstomia what does this microstomia mean micro means something small but stomia means uh, the mouth when you see the patient her mouth is very small when compared to the normal individual she when you ask to try to open the mouth when you ask to open the mouth of the patient if she opens the mouth you see the opening of the mouth is very small when compared to the normal individual this is microstomia okay and there was decrease in the salivary glands as well salivary glands production so somehow the saliva production also decreases okay finally it was causing some digestion problem as well okay and there was a dryness in the mouth it was causing because of decrease in the salivary glands saliva secretion and it will also cause esophageal dis motility even in the limited itself it was causing esophageal dis motility but in systemic also it is also causing esophageal dis motility and it will also cause gastro esophageal reflex i hope every one of us know g e r d gastric gastro esophageal reflex this is due to this it will decrease the tone of lower esophageal sphincter g e r d means gastro esophageal reflex this is due to this g e r d this will decrease the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter you know there are two sphincters upper esophageal sphincter in the esophagus and lower esophageal sphincter in the esophagus due to there was a gastric reflex this decrease the tone of lower esophageal sphincter okay and one more most important one is i am going to use the another color so you can understand it very properly it will 
for the cause pulmonary fibrosis this is most important pulmonary fibrosis it will cause pulmonary hypertension due to pulmonary hypertension it will leads the patient to death okay patient die so the cause of death in the scleroderma patient is due to pulmonary hypertension remember this the cause of death in the scleroderma patient is due to pulmonary hypertension pulmonary hypertension the cause of death in the scleroderma patient is due to pulmonary hypertension i told you three times remember this remember this remember this it comes as a question see i will write this point as well here the cause of cause of death in sclero derma pt means patient is due to pulmonary hypertension remember this point remember this this is most important okay and it affected the lungs as well and it is affecting in the next page i am going to write as it i am just going to continue okay it will also affect the kidneys kidneys also affected it will cause membranous glomerulonephropathy mgn membranous glomerulonephritis okay sorry i said you the wrong thing membranous glomerulonephritis it will cause let me write it membranous glomerulo nephritis due to this mgn this will decrease the gfr if we decrease the gfr then it will activate ras you know the ras right renin angiotensin system renin angiotensin due to this ras it will try to increase the blood pressure when the blood pressure increases more than what it required that will cause malignant hypertension if the blood pressure is like more than 200 let's say this will cause malignant hypertension this whole thing like due to decrease in the gfr increase in the bp this whole thing known as scleroderma crisis okay remember this this is scleroderma crisis but try to remember the cause of death most common cause of death in the scleroderma patient is due to pulmonary fibrosis that is causing pulmonary hypertension if you see both of the words in the option try to mark it as pulmonary hypertension pulmonary hypertension is causing the death in the scleroderma patient this is most important this is most important this is most important question okay and so we come to the end of this topic and the treatment for this was let's say the treatment for this is whatever we don't know the reason why it was causing it is only autoimmune so we will give if you don't know anything about the disease what we are going to give i already said you in the previous sessions as well whatever whatever the disease if was not controlled by any other drugs we will prefer the steroids steroids will help the patient better okay so we are just going to give steroids this is one and only option so we completed the topic now so this is not uh, we see like in everyday practice much but uh, somehow uh, i i have seen one patient when i was doing my uh, when i was doing internship in my college days i have seen one one patient but this is not uh, f- like frequent uh, disease we can see in everyday in opds 
that's why the most of question doesn't come from this area whatever the question comes i told you already so i'm just going to revise everything as you know in every video after my topic completes i i'm going to revise everything so you can remember everything from the from my video itself you don't need to watch any other videos and uh, i am just going to share you the pdf as well so you can access the pdf very well and you can read the pdf and uh, it was available in the telegram channel like any time you can access and if you have any questions or any doubts or uh, uh, like if you don't like how i am teaching so you can suggest me if i want to teach in some such a way you can understand it properly then what i am teaching now so i am just going to revise again this whole concept so you can understand the concept so make and build the concepts very well so you can answer the questions very very easily okay trust me you you are going to crack this exams coming exams and you are going to clear these shits in your life and you'll make you make your lives very happy okay so let's focus on the topic now so first of all i'm using the laser to explain you guys so first of all this is one of the connective tissue disorder this is a thought topic i am discussing now this is a scleroderma in the name itself the sclero means hardening and derma sclero means hardening and derma means skin there was a thick skin in the scleroderma patient it it comes from the name itself this is autoimmune problem whenever we say autoimmune problem it mainly it mainly affects females only okay when compared to males in the autoimmune problem in the scleroderma in the blood vessels there was an fibrosis that leads increasing in the collagen and there was increasing in the inflammation in our blood vessels that causes vasoconstriction vasoconstriction means decrease in the space in the blood vessel that decreases the blood flow to the end organs let's say if i use one example whenever if you consider the pipe if pipe has like a 10 cm like let's let's say the 5 cm uh, space inside the pipe if you decrease the 5 cm to 1 cm then the pipe space is decreases so content like water moving inside the water moving inside the pipe will also decrease and the outflow of the pipe will also decrease that's why that's how here also i'm just use one example to tell you guys so the blood supply to the end of our fingers will also decrease that's why it is causing renal phenomena okay in scleroderma it's it classified into three types that was one is localized one is limited and the other one is systemic in localized it was only localized to a particular area of the skin it is causing thickening or hardening of the skin this is known as morphia lesion and second one is limited it is a limited lesion of the scleroderma it was remembered by a mnemonic famous mnemonic known as c r e s t crust crust in the crust c stands for anti centromere antibody and it will also causes calcinosis in the particular area of the skin so calcium deposits we can see in the particular area of the skin that leads to swelling in the body in the skin of our body okay and in we can also see the reynolds phenomena what does this reynolds phenomena mean if you put a water in the cold surface or cold water hands in the cold water there was a color change in the hands first it changes into white and it changes into blue next and finally it changes into red color this color change is very important you need to remember this and here anti centromere antibody in the limited scleroderma this is very important you can expect a question from this area and next is esophageal dysmotility e is for esophageal dysmotility and s for sclerodactyly means thick fingers and telangiectasia t for telangiectasia that means if you see the patient's hand or somewhere you can see the spider web like red thin blood vessels this is spider web vessels is also known as telangiectasia it when it comes to the systemic it is involving all the body organs here the antibody was different that was anti topo isomerase antibody you need to remember this this is most important you're going to get the question here so yes yes anti topo isomerase topo isomerase antibody or anti scl antibody this is very important you need to remember these two antibodies in the systemic okay and it also causes renal phenomena and sclerodactyly renal phenomena means change in the finger colors when you put the 
hands in the water okay cool water and sclerodactyly thick fingers microstomia microstomia means a small mouth when when you ask the patient when you ask the lady to open the mouth you see the size of the mouth how much is the opening you feel like the size of opening of the mouth is very small when compared to the normal individual this is known as microstomia and this also causes decrease in the saliva production that leads to decrease in the digestion and it will also causes esophageal dysmotility and it will also causes GERD due to this GERD it will decrease the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter okay let's say uh, GERD means there was a gastric reflex okay it was coming back that was causing the lower esophageal sphincter damage and decrease the tone of the LES lower esophageal sphincter and if the examiner asks you the question what was the cause of death in the sclerodema patient you need to answer it as pulmonary hypertension because the pulmonary the sclerodema will causes pulmonary hypertension pulmonary fibrosis this pulmonary fibrosis it will cause pulmonary hypertension this pulmonary hypertension causes the death of the patient in the sclerodema okay it will also affect the kidneys that's uh, like it is causing membranous glomerulonephritis because that because of that that decreases the gfr glomerular filtration rate decreases if the glomerular filtration rate decreases the body tries to increase the bp by increasing the ras system if you increase the ras system it will increase the blood pressure this blood pressure if it is more than 200 we'll call it as malignant hypertension so let's say if the gfr decreases because the kidneys are affected and increasing the blood pressure as a compensation this is called as sclerodema crisis and the treatment for this we are going to give we don't know the cause or anything about the disease whatever it comes we give the steroids it will cure the disease and it will control the disease so this is all about this video and do like share and subscribe subscribe to my channel and i'm going to cover the lots of lots of topics how much i can do and uh, i'm going to help you guys uh, with clearing your exams and uh, as well as my exams i'm also studying for the exams as well along with you guys and by doing these videos it will be helpful for me as well and for you as well if you have any suggestions for me also i am just ready to take the suggestions so this is all about this video from uh, next video i am going to do is about the gout see this is the topic i am just going to cover in the next video so thank you guys once again for watching my video with the patients and lots of patients so for definitely for sure with my with my wishes everyone of us is going to clear all the exams coming exams so all the best for you guys don't lose the confidence confidence is the key for success so even if you don't study anything whatever the confidence you have that will make you to answer the questions to think about the questions think about the answers in the examinations very well and you answer the questions with the confidence you're gonna clear this shit exams in your life i will call the exams as shit in my life so this is how i'm going to call the exams all right thank you thank you very much bye bye